Good morning. I'm so disappointed that an unexpected Appropriations Committee meeting prevents me from joining you in person as I had planned. My gratitude for this high honor and for your commitment to freedom knows no bounds. Receiving an award named in honor of Ambassador Jean Kirkpatrick is especially meaningful. The first woman to represent America at the United Nations, Ambassador Kirkpatrick was always a steadfast defender of American values. The FDD has been an enormously important resource to me and to other members of Congress. Last summer, I spent countless days reviewing the administration's nuclear agreement with Iran. The discussions and advice from your policy experts, especially Mark Dubowitz and Juan Serrati, were particularly valuable in my decision to vote against the agreement. Mark was prescient in those discussions. He said that Iran would use the threat to walk away from the agreement to deter the administration from enforcing sanctions against Iran's other malign activities. These activities include its missile and weapons proliferation, its evasion of sanctions, its money laundering, and most of all, its support for terrorism. At the end of the agreement, let us all recognize that Iran will remain a nuclear threshold country, and that is not acceptable. Now, Secretary Jack Lew has warned us recently that if the United States is overly restrictive on sanctions with respect to Iran, international confidence in the dollar itself or in the power of sanctions could be undermined. But in my judgment, the far greater danger is if this administration were to permit dollarized transactions as an element of any trade with Iran without our seeing major changes in Iran's non-nuclear nefarious behavior. Doing so would erode the coercive power of sanctions and undermine the rationale for imposing sanctions in the first place. The existing sanctions that block Iran from the U.S. financial system were put in place because of Iran's nuclear program, but also because Iran presented a threat to the integrity of the international financial system. Today, Iran remains just as much of a threat to the integrity of the financial system as it did when the sanctions were first enacted. Also consider the fact that today Iran remains the number one state sponsor of terrorism in the world. Today, Iran continues to launch ballistic missiles in contravention of the UN Security Council resolution. And today, Iran remains the worst offender for money laundering. It is one of only three countries worldwide on the Financial Action Task Force's blacklist. We should prohibit any direct or indirect access to the dollar unless Iran has ended its unacceptable behavior and compensated each of the families harmed by Iran's support of terrorism as required by court orders. If unwise financial concessions are provided to Iran, I will work with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to reinforce the existing sanctions. 
Now, I understand that Adam Zubin will also be speaking with you later today. In my judgment, Adam has served as a dedicated public servant for more than 10 years at Treasury. His nomination to be the Undersecretary of the Treasury for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence is well deserved. This position has been vacant for far too long, considering the critical role that this individual plays in sanctions enforcement. It is my hope that Adam's nomination will soon be brought to the Senate floor for consideration. Again, let me express my deep gratitude and appreciation for this prestigious award. I am so honored by it, and I am so grateful for all the work that your organization does to advance the understanding of the public and of policymakers of vital issues like the ill-advised agreement with Iran. Thank you so much for the award and for your wonderful work.